Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for joining me in my shop. Today is August 1st. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't even want to face up to it. August 1st. Another fantastic weather day here. Great fortune for those who live in my area. Okay, uh, what do we got in front of us here? So, this is the B&K 2040 CB, as in Citizens Band, CB signal generator. So this is a signal generator intended for use with uh, CB radio, CB radio repair. Um, I've already tested this briefly. Um, I haven't checked it out, just brought it in my shop now, but I, I know it basically functions. So uh, what am I going to do in the shop here? We're going to find out how well it functions, I think. That's what we'll, we'll do. So not a complicated machine at all. In fact, it's a huge case for, for what? For drama's sake? So basic uh, outline of its operation, as I understand it at this point, but I'm liable to learn a little bit as we go. So there's an RF output here. And this is uh, what would go into your CB radio. So you hook your CB radio antenna output right to here. It would not transmit into here. This guy has protection, um, so it won't, won't suffer damage if you do that. Because sooner or later, if you were a real CB radio technician, let's say back in the 1980s, sooner or later you're going to transmit into this thing. So really there's an output from here. The output level is controlled by this. It appears to be fairly precise, except there's this uh, control here, which alters the output level also. So even though you might have this set to 30 microvolts, this control can go all the way from zero, I guess up to 30 would be the idea. I, maybe that's what it means. Put it full, you get the 30 microvolts here. It goes all the way up to <clears throat> Excuse me, 100,000 microvolts. So that'd be 100 millivolts, or 0.1 volts, I guess is what that would would really mean. 0.1 volts. That's got a dB scale in here too, in case you want to know it in decibels. Um, it has modulation. This is, sets the modulation level. Typically, when you're doing uh, work on stuff, you 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 you'd want like about 30 percent modulation, something like that has a, a number of different uh, settings here for what tone is modulating the output of this. One is CW, continuous wave, and I think what they mean here is it's just a carrier. 400 hertz, 1000 hertz, 2500 hertz, and then an external, you can put an external modulation into this guy. The meter function is either reading percent modulation and then below it, it has delta F. I probably can't really see that. Yeah, maybe you can see it. Delta F. So that's a, a, a frequency adjustment. You push this switch here. Well, maybe you don't. Yeah, I guess you push it here. So the meter now reflects this delta F thing. And you pull it on. And then you can adjust the output frequency slightly up and down. It has some lights here to mark when you're too high or too low. And we have to assume it's crystal controlled inside. So uh, one of the things that I'm interested in finding out is just well, how accurate is the output frequency on this. My, my impression already from fooling with it is it's, it's pretty accurate. Here it tells you what channel you're on, CB channel, CB channel number 8. And here it tells you the frequency, which is actually kind of handy. I, I, I've actually referred to this without even being plugged in just to find out what, what frequency is channel 7. Oh, it's right here. 27 megahertz and 35 kilohertz. Here it has a, a feature, uh, I'm pretty sure it's crystal controlled, uh, 455 kilohertz. The, 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 hey, 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 what happened? Did I step on the cord or something? The, uh, uh, so you pull this on, a little red light comes on, and I believe you're supposed to have 455 kilohertz right here. Why do you want 455 kilohertz? Well, most radio intermediate frequency stages run at 455 kilohertz. Not all, but most. So this will give you a crystal controlled dead on 455 kilohertz. Or is it? That's something I want to find out. So it's an awfully large machine for just a few very simple uh, functions. Would I be remiss to suggest it's this big 
the main reason being drama. <laughs> nice big panel meters. It's got, it's got a nice balanced look to it. The uh, designer must have worked on this a little bit. Okay, well we can turn it on. Why don't we turn it on? Here's the power. I've got it plugged in here. I'm going to just flip on the main power. There we go. And this guy's right over. Why is he right over? Oh, there's a setting here. It's not right over. It's almost right over. So this is not quite making it to, to the 1 or the 10 here, depending upon how you look at it. That's actually a 1. 1.0, that's 0 0.8, 0 0.6. So you're going to take this number and what are you going to do with it? Well, I don't know. I would, I would have to assume you dial this up to 1 and then you can direct read these values. These values, the white ones here. We will try to check that. 27 megahertz. Now, is there anything on the back? No inputs on the back, just a fuse back there. Everything's on the front. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop for a bit and think about how we can check what's coming out of here. Is it really 27? You know what? I think I know how to do it. I think the SDR will be the, the best way to get a look at that. Great. I'm going to get my cup of coffee for a few minutes. Okay, here we go. So that's my SDR you see up above there on the screen. And uh, it's going to help us judge whether the frequency output of this is correct or even there. Pretty sure it's there. Uh, it's, it's already connected right into the antenna here. Over to my SDR. That's how I'm doing it. Okay. Um, we see nothing there right now. So th those vertical lines you see are some kind of interference or, or something. Uh, I don't see anything. Okay. I guess we'll just start jacking up the output voltage here and we'll see what happens. Um, 20 frequency is really close to 27 megahertz. 27005 channel 4. That's interesting. So 27 megahertz is going to be right down in this area here. That's where we're looking for something to appear. So I'm going to crank this up. Nothing has happened. Okay, we're just going to go up one step at a time here. It looks like all those uh, noise things have increased. Oh, there's a little something showing up now, right near 27. Just a hair above 27. We'll go one more. Okay, that's great. Let's measure this frequency more accurately now. Um, I think I have to adjust the step size here somehow. Step size. One hertz. Okay. Uh, let's can we zoom in on this? I'm going to move this over, and we're going to zoom in on it. Here's the signal here. This is still jumping in steps of five. How did this get to five? Five kilohertz. One kilohertz. Let's put it there. So if we get right on the line. So according to my SDR, 27005 is a little over to the side here. I've got nothing showing up on the upper part. Maybe if I adjust this range thing. Well, no. Maybe it's this one here, offset. Whoops, whoops. Minus 10, minus 40. I can't get anything to appear up here. Well, I'm going to just ignore it, ignore that. I don't know why. I'm going to just turn up the. Uh, I'm down to 150. Minus 150 decibels, and it's still not showing up on the top part. Maybe it's 
just because I don't know what I'm doing here. Hmm. That's a lot. Let's just give a little more juice here. So I've seen a couple other things show up. This is showing up over here. And that could be from overloading the SDR. Uh, what would the SDR's input limit be? Um, so if this is, it would be something like 0.1 volts, somewhere in that area, I would think. Uh, that would be like a, a 100 uh, microvolts. Because I think you can get 100. Oh my gosh, what has happened to my camera? <laughs> uh, uh, how long has it been staring at the ceiling there? Oh my gosh. I must have stepped on the wire. Or done something. I don't know what happened there. Is it moving again? It's going on its own. My camera's developed a mind of its own. That's what's happened. Okay, now it won't move. Okay, uh, 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 well, that, if that's true, I just keep jacking this up here. Wow, I mean, it's really... Don't know why my SDR is not responding on the top, on the upper part. Oh, well, okay. Uh, gee, that, that's kind of disturbing me a little bit. Why would it not? So like minus, like at the bottom of the scale on the SDR now, the very bottom is minus 150, and I think that's decibels. That's way down in the weeds. That's way down. That's, there should be noise happening at that. Oh, talking about noise. See the uh, SDR signal level over here. I don't understand what's going on here with this. Uh, I don't understand. The bottom is showing it, and the top is not. Oh, I know what it is. It's this. How, how many of you are yelling at me? There we go. There's the noise up there. Okay, okay, all is normal again. So what, you know, how did I end up with this machine? So a woman called me up about a month ago and said her, her husband had passed away a few years ago. He had a shop and she's cleaned most of the stuff out of it, but now there's just some bags of parts left where I'd be interested in picking up bags of electronic parts. She said mostly resistors. I thought, well, sure, why not? What's a, what's a, what's a bag or two of uh, resistors? So over there a few days ago, she finally called me up, come, come get them, and it's more than a bag of parts. First of all, the bags were huge. Great big, big bags of stuff, parts, boxes of things, and a stack of equipment, including this. So I didn't, I didn't you know, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't want that. I can't do that at that point. I'm helping her clean out her husband's shop, so I took it all. That included this thing. Didn't, I didn't even look at this. I didn't even know what it was. I was, I was grabbing Turns out I've got a complete, turns out her husband didn't just have a shop in the basement of their house. He owned the stereo store in Aurelia here where I live. And eventually he retired and packed up the store and kept much of the stuff. Unfortunately, she invited other people over to pick through it all before I showed up. So all the good stuff was, was, was gone, but this was left. And another piece, which will be in here uh, next. Okay, I got my SDR going. Let's just change this setting here. Make it look a little more normal. Here we go. Now, if this is a, a decibel scale here, which I believe it is, then we might be able to get some use out of that. Let's turn up the signal again. There you can see it showing up. Now it's beating the noise signal. 
I'm not seeing anything down here, but let's not worry about it. So again, this is if my SDR is accurate, and do I have an offset? I do have a, I have an offset in here. Let's get rid of it. Okay, that didn't really make much difference at all. So it appears that uh, if you trust my SDR, and I wouldn't offhand, uh, it's close but not dead on. It's actually so close that I cannot move that onto it. Let's change this to 100 hertz. So according to this, the actual output frequency is 27, 3.5. There's no, there is, there's a delta, there's a delta here. Okay, let's play around here. Let me put this back to 27, even though, again, the SDR could, could be out. 27 megahertz. I thought, I thought, I thought the uh, transmitter was below. It's above. Hmm. Okay. So, we have no modulation. The meter, the meter, the meter is actually do have a little bit. Meters set for this function. Oh yeah, there it goes back and forth. So if we wanted to nail it according to the SDR, we would do this. Now on the machine are a couple lights. This one has a negative sign, this one has a positive sign. It's trying to tell you whether you're above or below the frequency of the crystal. I believe that's what it's doing. And I think the proper setting is you, uh, if you want to do this manually for some reason, you work this until the lights are out. Well, you can't quite get it out. Or this meter is minimized, which it's minimized now. And that, that's how you get it to be dead on. How uh, come? don't understand why they have this kind of function here. If there's a crystal in there, like what these lights are really telling you, plus and minus of what? It can only be the crystal. And if the crystal's a little out, it's just helping you zero in on the crystal being out. I don't get it. So I do have the complete service manual for this machine, uh, which we may want to and make some use of. Okay, let's go up the channel. Output looks pretty consistent. Just move this this way. That's the end of the CB band right up here. CB band as laid out on the SDR. Let's keep going up in frequency. I'm looking at the level. The level is the same all the way. That's good. Actually, it looks like it's getting up. Oh, where are we now? This is channel 40. Frequency is 27405. Is that so? 27405. That's this. Okay, my uh, SDR screen just jumped to the left. 274 is supposed to be 05. Well, it's questionable again. Just who, who's who's out here? Okay, I don't know. I can't. I don't think I can really. Well. So I don't know if this is DBM on the uh, SDR, and what is this? It says DBM here, into 50 ohms. Um, the input to my SDR is not 50 ohms. The input to the SDR is probably 300 ohms, something like that. Okay, uh, now, I could, I could put this on a scope. Now that might be the better way to do this. I have a scope here. Do I have one that will go to 27 megahertz? Interestingly enough, having a scope that goes high enough to look directly at the output of something like this, up close to 30 megahertz, not necessarily a common thing back in the day that people would have in their shops. They typically have a 0 to 5 megahertz, something like that. The other device I'm going to bring in here, uh, probably tomorrow or the next day, uh, has, an, has a converter in it and converts the transmitted frequency from your CB radio. Remember, you're not transmitting into this thing. This thing is actually transmitting out. But the other device, you transmit right into it, and it will convert the frequency down to around a megahertz, 
and then you can put it on your 0 to 5 megahertz scope and you can see the output of your radio uh, where you couldn't see it before because your 5 megahertz scope is not going to see 27 megahertz. Now my, my scope here, I've got a pretty good scope there. I think this is 100. I, does it say on it somewhere? Because <laughs> I can never remember these things. I think this guy's good for 100 megahertz. I'm going to have a coffee and where are we on the scale on the time here? So, Because I'm on my way to a mini field day today with the ham club in Aurelia for 10 o'clock. You can see the time right now is 9.15. What to do here? What to do here? Um, throw it on the scope, see what shows up. Oh, we could do that. If uh, in the end my uh, scope is uh, is not capable, we'll, we'll find out pretty quick. Okay, let me stop for a sec here. So in, in Canada, CB radio is, was wiped out I would guess. I mean, I, I, it's been a long time since I had a CB radio that I actually used. But in Canada, uh, it's illegal to have a CB radio in your car, or at least use one in your car. Shoot, that, that, that didn't quite work. Wait a minute, what are you thinking, Jim? No, you're thinking straight. I'm not thinking straight. Talking about one thing, doing something else. Yeah, you're not allowed to have a CB radio in your car. It's considered a distraction, even though you might be talking with a microphone. Uh, no one's allowed to do that except those people who are allowed to do it. It's the obvious people, like police, and fire, people like that. Ambulance, they can use a radio in their vehicle. But the average person cannot anymore. Now, may maybe there are CB radios that are hands-free. I, I don't know, uh, because I think CB radio in Canada is, is gone. Now, I usually have a CB radio operating uh, I'm listening to and I'm just listening for Skip to come up from the States because I get a kick out of it. That's about it. I, I don't don't hit the transmit button. There's nobody to transmit to anyway. So what in heaven's name would I ever do with this stuff? I don't know. Okay, let's look at the scope. You can see it in the background there. Um, we need it running way faster than that. More sensitive here. So this is 0.1 volts per division. Let's go more sensitive. Okay, 10 millivolts per division. Okay, see a thing on it. Uh, am I doing something wrong? So we're set for AC here. And uh, I'm using a cable I've never used before. Oh, look at that. This cable came with the equipment. So somebody's not happy here. Let's turn this up. There we are. Okay, it was just me that wasn't happy. Okay, now we see something up on the scope there. Let's just figure this out. Okay, so on the microvolt scale, We are at 3,000 microvolts. I guess if you turn this all the way up, which it is turned up, 3,000 microvolts is point zero is is uh, three millivolts. So we're at 10 millivolts per division here. You can't see that. 10 millivolts per division. Let me bring the camera over here. I guess it's just a triggering setting. Yeah, triggering settings off. So it looks a little like there's two lines here, but there isn't. There's a whole, there's a usual looking band uh, to my eye. Uh, high, high frequency band in here. Uh, if I just position this right on a line, it's two, it's exactly two. Peak to peak voltage here according to this, is 20 millivolts, peak to peak. This is probably reporting the RMS voltage, which just says microvolts. It doesn't say anything else, but it's almost certainly the, the, mic, the uh, RMS version of it. 
So is that anywhere near correct? Um, good question. I, I gotta stop and do a little calculating here. <laughs> Even though it's just factors of 10. Okay, not, not much calculating involved. So up on the scope, we've got 20 millivolts, 10 per division. Two divisions, 20 millivolts, 20 millivolts peak to peak, same as 10 millivolts peak. And I remember you just multiply peak by 0.7, and it gives you a pretty close value for the RMS RMS 7. 7 millivolts on the scope, RMS, and this is set to 3, 3 millivolts. So about double, double the output here. Double, I have, uh, double it. Okay, let's just watch the output on the scope now. I'm going to switch frequencies and see if it remains fairly stable or not. Uh, right now we're on channel 40, so I'll just go down. It's getting a little bigger. It's not changing much at all. Did I go all the way around once? Down to oh, a little change there. Very hard for you to see this on on there, but basically no, it's, it's pretty pretty good. What you would expect of a signal generator going up and down, just a you know maybe a percent or two, just enough I can see it, but not not much more than that. And if I change the uh, this control here from max where it is now. so hard to put a scope on the camera. Going down, going down, 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 down. Now my scope is, is fluttering, you can't see it. And now my scope has switched into uh, this this scope. When, the, uh, when there's no signal to trigger, it internally triggers automatically. So you don't, you don't lose the line when, there's, when it's not triggering. It, do, it doesn't go out, so it's just a feature of the scope. But you can still see a little wee bit there. Hard for you to see again. So it really does go. It does match the, uh, the the meter on the front here fairly well. Let's try that out. So we got this on 10 or 1. That's the two divisions on the uh, scope. And I'm going to put it down to 5, which you know would appear to be half. And what do we got on the scope? Again, let me just put this down. Yeah, that's pretty close one division now instead of two okay just looking just looking for anything oh well, let's check this uh, this output here and then I, I'm gonna have to get going um, how are we gonna do that uh, we, 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 should, we should put this on the uh, back on the SDR okay let, let me stop for a sec here okay there's the SDR again in the uh, corner there um, so this is a pull-on switch. Right now it's off, and the SDR, the uh, the red line there. I'll put it right at 450, 55. So that's marking where we should see something happen. And I've got this connected. I do not have it connected, Jim. What did you do? I'm on the. I connected it to the scope. <laughs> Wait a minute. Connected to the wrong thing. Wow! Lots of stuff there. Okay, so we're going to turn this down. Somewhere in the midst of all that crap. Bingo! Right on the money. Did you see it? Goes right up the red line. And you can see on the waterfall display. And this is level. Ooh, my gosh. Lots of, lots of juice here. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, that's too much for my SDR. Let's stick it back on the scope. It wants to go there. It's kind of a clumsy way of doing this, but it's only 455 kilohertz. So. Get a look at what the actual signal looks like. Oh, what's that? That that looks like something not grounded. That's what that looks like. 
Okay, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm disconnecting the uh, lead, sticking it in. What happened? It did look like maybe this wasn't making contact. So new clip leads, maybe they're they're duds. Something going on over here. Tricky here. Move this way. Who's, who's jumping up and down? So is it this control? So I, I think I've still got this going, maybe. This might be like a hum, 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 hum. I'm not sure what's happening. disconnected. Maybe it's bad. Bad grounding. How about like that? Okay. Well it showed up on the SDR quite nicely. It's not showing up on the scope. Maybe I've got this up. not sensitive enough. Oh what was that? It just suddenly jumped like crazy. Okay here we are. Disappeared. Well, something's inconsistent here, but it's more likely it's these wires. The way I've done this, I think maybe this cable, this cable I'm using, maybe a dud. Yeah, I, I think maybe the cable's a dud. Okay, so bottom line is 455 was right on the frequency according to my SDR. And the output is there, it's variable, it's significant too. I mean, we crank this right up, right off the screen here. There we are. So that's one, two, three divisions, 0.2 per division. So it's 0 0.6, 0 0.6 volts, half a volt coming out of this guy here. Okay, well, that's working. Okay, I think basically, this guy is working. Uh, oh, we didn't play around. Okay, two, two, one, one. Yeah, oh, one more thing. I should hook up a uh, CV radio. Well, that would be interesting. Why? why? <laughs> That's what it's really intended for. C C CV radio. Do I have time for that? So a few years ago, I picked up three still-in-the-box CV radios at a yard sale for, for next to nothing. Here's one of them right here. It's powered up with a little wall wart, actually a big wall wart. Not going to transmit with it. That would not be a good idea. The idea is to receive with it. The input here, you know, whenever I listen to a radio like this that's just making a hiss, I start hearing voices. Yeah, I'm hearing voices. <laughs> I'm sure there aren't any. I'm, I'm okay. Okay, turn that feature off. Turn the modulation 1000 hertz. Keep it the minimum. Output level. Oh. It's too much there. Channel 6, okay, we'll go channel 6 here. Up, up. Well, 6 here, 6 there. No, no real surprise to this, because guess what, I've already done this test. Let's go up to 40. Look at all these are. Maybe so you can go a little high uh, for some reason. Checking the radio. We'll go up to 40. Down to 40. There's 40. Okay, let's put some modulation into it. Raise this up to 30%. Turn the volume down. Now I realize.
realize how high the volume was. So it's 30 on the meter. It sounds like when you get to 30, there's a little bit of distortion there. So I'm just going to go just a wee bit below. There we are. So you can listen to this fantastic radio with its little tiny speaker. 1,000, 2,500. All there. Okay, and we're on a pretty low level of cabinets. Here. We're on a pretty low output level as far as the range of this thing is involved. This isn't even turned up either. So, so lots of in, certainly enough signal to come out that uh, it should make any CV radio uh, operate, even one that's out of sorts. It's out of sorts. You need to maybe start with a very strong input signal. Well, I, I think this thing is working perfectly fine. I haven't found anything here that suggests it's in trouble in any way. That's fantastic. Uh, great, that's it for today because I'm on my way now to the uh, park. It's a POTA, Parks on the Air. We're going to activate a park here in Aurelia. Uh, a park that's a, a little bit squirreled away and it's not one of the main parks in Aurelia and uh, ne never been to a park where POTA is happening so it'll be interesting to see what's going on and uh, I don't really know what the guys are trying to do doing HF or doing uh, I don't know we will see so thanks a lot for watching today tomorrow I'll bring in its brother another testing device rather uh, kind of an odd machine and we'll go over that and see if that part of this uh, test setup is also working great have a great day see ya